Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to those of you who braved the rain and are keeping carefully distant and all those important things. And a special welcome to those who are following us online and, and sharing in this very special day. And this morning, a special welcome to Graham Stevens, who's come from the Prince of Wales Band to play for us. We won't be having any children laying any uh, crosses at the, at the uh, memorial, but if there are some spare ones if people want to put those in. And perhaps you'd like to do that during the uh, reading of the names if they're particularly your family. Again, I want to thank Sean Young and his team who keep this village green marvellous and this work has been finished around the memorial. It's really wonderful. We're going to have a, a wreath laid by Danny Ray from the village, um, Colonel, and uh, he'll do that on behalf of the military. The sad thing this year, of course, is that we're not supposed to sing which is a disappointment to the Welsh and I guess to the rest of us as well. But Danny's going to start with our first reading. God is our refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam, and the mountains quake with their surging. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place dwells where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. Nations are in uproar. Kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see what the Lord has done, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. He says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Lord, this morning we thank you that you are our refuge and our strength and our fortress. We thank you that again we come before you to give thanks for those who died that we might be free and live as you intend us to live. And so we pray, Lord, as we commemorate and remember those who've died in the past in all the conflicts in which this, world, this country has been engaged, that our hearts will be grateful for the sacrifice that they, they made for us. And we pray that you will continue to be with families and with servicemen on this day. For Jesus' sake. Amen. And now Colin and Jill are going to read the names of the villagers who died. So today we especially remember from the First World War. Lieutenant Charles Rook, who died in France on the 19th of June, 1915, aged 20. Lieutenant Colonel Lionel Bosenkep died at Gallipoli, 21st of July, 1915, aged 53. Abel Seaman William Lambert, died on board HMS Black Prince on the 31st of May, 1916, aged 18. Lieutenant A. E. Ashton died 10th of July, 1916, 
aged 28. Private George Butchers died in Belgium on the 2nd of July 1916, aged 19. Abel Seaman Alexander Williams died in France 3rd of May 1917, aged 22. Private Antonio Burden, who died in Belgium on the 28th of April, 1918, aged 38. Private Nehemiah Reynolds, died 22nd of October, 1918, aged 25. Sapper Cyril Crum who died on the 3rd of November 1918, aged 22. Second World War, Abel Seaman Alfred Hill, died on board HMS Hunter, 10th of April 1940, aged 19. Air Gunner Percival Harris, who died on the 10th of October 1941, aged 21. Sergeant Harold Durrant, RAF, died on a Lancaster bomber, 21st of April 1943, aged 19. Guardsman Albert Richards, died in Italy on the 29th of January, 1944, aged 22. Guardsman Stanley Sims, died in France, 12th of August, 1944, aged 26. Light Sergeant Victor Morgan, died in Germany, on the 3rd of November, 1944, aged 20. And finally, we lay across for all those who have served, survived the horrors of conflict over the years and lived with wounds and scars, physical, mental and emotional, that affect their lives today. They shall not grow old, as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. Father, today we want to give thanks for these lives were shocked again often at how young they were and how close to the end of the war some were. We thank you too for the families who gave their sons and pray that your hand would continue to be upon this village, that you will keep us through whatever today and the future brings and we will know that you are with us and you watch over us. Bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
We give thanks for those who put duty before life. We give thanks for the loyalty and fortitude of those who kept the home fires burning during dark times. Today, in your presence, Lord, we remember the waste of life and wit and learning, the love that was never shared, the torture of body and mind, those who died without understanding or valour, and those who have no grave to mark their sacrifice. Lord of all, we pray for the victims of war, those across the world who bear the scars of conflict, the injured, the maimed, the mentally distressed, those who have lost limbs, their reason, or their loved ones through the horrors of war. We pray for those left homeless or as refugees, those who have lost their livelihoods and security, and those who still live in daily fear for their lives. We pray for children who have been orphaned, Parents who mourn their children. Husbands and wives who have lost their partners. Countless families whose lives will never be the same again. We pray for those in the armed forces, charged with keeping the peace in countries across the world their work involving months away from family and friends and often danger to themselves. We pray for world leaders and rulers, politicians and diplomats, those whose decisions and negotiations affect the lives of so many and in whose hands Peace ultimately lies.
give wisdom to all who work for peace. Courage to those who strive for justice. And strength to those who seek to break down barriers so that the causes of conflict may be overcome. Grant that wherever war or the threat of war continues to haunt lives, a way of reconciliation may be found and a spirit of unity established between people and nations. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our second reading is taken from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armour of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore put on the full armour of God so that when the day of evil comes you may be able to stand your ground and after you have done everything to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled round your waist with the breastplate of righteousness in place and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. There are so many things in our world which take from us our peace. An army ranged against us is easily identified as an enemy. But this year there's been a hidden foe which has stolen around the world. A virus which we're still learning how to counter, let alone defeat. And our response has had all sorts of consequences that take away our peace, personally. But the world has seen nations at odd with themselves, protests in Hong Kong, Belarus, throughout South America. And in the democracy of the USA, we've been exposed to a man who would polarize and destroy the nation for his own ego. There's also a continual battle for freedom in a world of political correctness. What a mess. As Christians, fortunately, we believe in the God who created each one of us, as well as the immense universe. And God invites us to return to him who alone gives us true peace and real freedom. God's message for all of us is that he wants us to know of his great love. He was the one who did not spare himself, but gave his life for us all. It was love that brought him to this world to fight against our great enemy, the destroyer. And Jesus won the defining battle on the cross and defeated for all time those things which keep us from God, from peace, and from freedom. That is our sin and its consequence of death and the eternal separation from God when life ends on earth. So in the midst of all our battles, whatever they are, Jesus invites us to come to him. 
In him we will find the deep peace that we long for, the stability of his love and the trust in his goodness, the life and freedom for which we were created. Listen to these words from Jesus. I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I've overcome the world. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you for being the Prince of Peace. We thank you for your incredible love for us and the way in which when you enfold us in that love, we are safe for today and forever. Closing prayer, the morning collect. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life. To serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your servants, from all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defence, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with us. Sorry we can't invite you to come and have something warming and tasty in the church, but hopefully next year we'll be back to normal. Bless you all.